In this video, we're going to solve a problem involving a static friction force. Here we have a block. The block is sitting on an inclined plane. In this inclined plane, the student begins to raise the angle of inclination until finally, when it reaches 40 degrees, and just as it gets to 40 degrees, the block begins to slide. So right at 40, it hasn't started to slide yet, we've got an example of a case where we've reached the maximum static friction. So we want to write a free body diagram, and they're asking us to calculate the coefficient of static friction for this particular problem. This is an historically interesting problem because this is one of the ways to experimentally find the static friction. You can take the two surfaces and incline it until you reach a certain angle and then begin to find that it slips. So this has been done for a long time. So let's show you how it works. Um, first one, draw a free body diagram. So there's my block. I have weight going down. I have a normal force going up an angle theta, and a friction force that's going this way. And I know it has to be going that way because without friction, I know that this block, since there's no other forces in the horizontal direction besides this weight, this component of the weight would accelerate the block downward and it begin to slide down. And like all inclined plane problems, I will find it convenient to lay my axis where the x direction lies along the incline. Then I'm going to run a right Newton's second law. Some of the forces in x is mAx. Some of the forces in y is mass times acceleration of y. But in this particular problem, we know that the acceleration is 0. So let's see. For forces, I've got a weight component, and that's the opposite side, so I want to use the trig function sine theta. And then all of the friction force lies in the negative x direction, so that's minus f. Along the y, I've got the normal. And then this component here of the weight is in y, and that's the adjacent side, so minus w cosine theta is 0. So this says that the normal is W cosine theta. And it says that the friction force is equal to the weight times the sine of theta. And if this was not at an angle of 40 degrees, if this was at the angle of 15 degrees, these two equations would still be true. Okay, they would be true, and at 15 degrees, the normal would be bigger than at 40 degrees because the cosine is bigger at 15 than 40. But it turns out the friction force would be smaller as the 15, the sine of 15 is less than the sine of 40. And when these get to be 45, the friction would equal the normal and anything less than that. So in our case, it's 40 degrees. You find that the friction force is, in fact, going to be less than the normal. What's important here is that these equations are always true because Newton's second law is always true. We haven't assumed anything about the maximum static friction force. Now, at a particular angle, 40 degrees, now we have some more information. So at 40 degrees, at 40 degrees, well, I'm going to call that equation 1 and this equation 2. At 40 degrees, F is equal to F max, and that's equal to mu S n. It's not equal to that except at 40 degrees. This is equation 3. So for 40 degrees, we want to sub, substituting, equation 3 into equation 1 
And if we do that, then we get mu s n is equal to w sine theta. We now can substitute two, by the way, let's call this equation four, two into four. So we can substitute this equation for n into here, and we get mu s times w cosine theta is equal to w sine theta. We see that we can divide both sides by w. assuming that the weight is not zero, assuming that you actually have a, a problem. And we have mu s cosine theta is equal to sine theta. So mu s is sine theta over cosine theta means that it's the tan of theta, which of course theta was 40 degrees. This is the only time this is true, so it's the tangent of 40 degrees. So mu s is approximately, now I have to pull up my calculator of course. So Taking the tangent of 40 degrees, I find it's 0 0.839. And that's the answer to this problem. So by tilting the ramp until you find where it begins to slide, find that angle and take the tangent of that angle and you can find the coefficient of static friction. Notice the coefficient of static friction at the end only depended upon the angle. And everything else is canceled out. You can't depend on G or anything else because fundamentally it's an interaction between the table and the block. So although we may have used gravity as a way of finding it, just like we could use the spring as a way of finding it, it's not dependent on the spring, it's not dependent on gravity. It's dependent upon the nature of the surfaces of the block and the inclined plane. Change either one. Change the inclined plane or change the block. And you change this coefficient of static friction. The coefficient of static friction doesn't belong to the block. I mean, a lot of times you'll see that. The coefficient of static friction of the block is. That's really not a good way to say it. We're just being lazy. It's really the coefficient of static friction of the block and the inclined plane. It depends on the makeup of both and how smooth both are. It does not depend on some other things that you might think that it would, like the width of the block. That seems kind of strange, but it's true. It doesn't depend on that, but it does depend on the nature of what the materials are through their electronic interactions and how rough their surfaces are, because that changes the way the normal forces are interacting as they bang in these little bumps and jags that we showed before. All right, practice that problem. Make sure that you can work problems like it. And if you can work that, then you're good on static friction.